Good afternoon. I give the floor to the President of the European Council, Mr. Van Rompuy. Good afternoon. This morning we talked about Japan and the consequences of the terrible tragedy by which it was hit. And we also finalized yesterday's work on the economy and on Libya. Regarding Japan, the European Union will support the country in overcoming the hardship it faces after the earthquake and the tsunami. And we expressed our sympathy and solidarity for the Japanese people. We are ready as a union to assist when it is needed and in any way we can. As true friends of Japan, we restate the strategic importance of the EU-Japan relationship. These are all points that I also underlined in my phone call with Prime Minister Khan a few days ago. The Japanese Prime Minister told me he highly appreciated the support we offer. He reassured me that the Japanese government is doing its utmost to resolve the situation at the Fukushima nuclear power plant and to regain power supply in affected areas. He stressed that the government will continue to work in full transparency with the European Union. As we know, the effects of the events go beyond Japan, and that's why the European Union is drawing the lessons fully. We pay close attention to the consequences for the global economy and the financial markets. And of course, there are the nuclear aspects. That is a top priority. We therefore decided that the safety of nuclear plants should be urgently reviewed in the so-called stress tests. The Commission will report on the stress tests to the European Council before the end of this year. Because the danger does not stop at our borders, we encourage and support neighboring countries to do similar stress tests. A worldwide review of nuclear plants would be best, and we ask the Commission to review existing EU rules for safety of nuclear installations and propose improvements if necessary. In Europe, we want the highest standards for nuclear safety. We want the highest standards for nuclear safety. Our colleagues were very outspoken about this. This morning, we also adopted the conclusions of this meeting. Regarding Libya, we have showed our unity and our determination yesterday. We set out an appropriate cause to stop Gaddafi from killing its own people. At the extraordinary European Council, the 11th of March, we determined the conditions together. In the following international diplomatic effort, the Europeans were in the lead. This resulted in the UN Security Council resolution on the protection of civilians as a reason for intervention. It is a historic resolution. The actions taken in conformity with the resolution and again with the Europeans in the lead have helped to save thousands of lives. The concrete decisions of this European Council on Libya are also very significant. Further sanctions against the regime we want to stop their income flow from oil and gas sales. More humanitarian assistance if needed, because the situation remains worrisome. And the confirmation of our political objectives, Gaddafi must go, and there must be a political transition led by the Libyans. Regarding the economy, I will not repeat all the decisions we took yesterday in detail. You will find them in the conclusions. A brief summing up tells us as much about the breadth of the front along which we are making progress. One, we concluded the Euro Plus Pact. I welcome that the six non-Euro countries will join it. And furthermore, a number of colleagues already announced this morning their concrete commitments under the pact. They are Spain, France, Belgium, Germany. Two, we reached a total and detailed agreement on the permanent stability mechanism and on the temporary facility. Three, we agreed on the treaty amendment needed to give full legal certainty to the stability mechanism after the positive opinion of the European Parliament. 
Four, we endorse the agreement on the six legislative proposals on budgetary and macroeconomic surveillance. Five, credible stress tests for the banks will take place soon. There are the main elements of our global economic package to come out of the crisis. By way of conclusion, let me just remind you that exactly one year ago, on the 25th of March 2010, the European Council decided to improve the economic governance in launching a task force. One year later, we have witnessed a sea change. In 12 months, the working of the Economic and Monetary Union in the Eurozone was fundamentally improved. We have new rules, we have new instruments, and more ambitious policies. It was an effort of all institutions and all member states. It was not always easy, not always without drama, but the political will has been unflinching. Our sense of direction has been clear, and the results are there. Thank you. Thank you, President. Mr. Barroso, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, this morning, our discussion focused on Japan and, more generally, nuclear safety. Of course, uh, we express our solidarity with the Japanese people while dealing with this crisis with great courage and dignity. The European Union is doing all it can to help. In the last days, we have responded to Japan's call <laughs> specific in kind assistance to bring relief to the Japanese uh, people. It is important to say that radiation levels in Europe have not changed, but of course we are following these issues with great care. The terrible events in Japan remind us that while we have very different views on situations uh, in the European Union regarding nuclear energy, we must be united on the issue of nuclear safety. We need to ensure that the highest nuclear safety standards are respected. The Commission has called for a comprehensive safety and risk assessment to be done at all nuclear power plants in Europe and neighboring countries. This must be done on the basis of clear, common, transparent criteria, and this has been fully endorsed today. The Commission will work with the European Nuclear Safety Regulatory Group and all other relevant bodies and authorities in developing the modalities of these safety assessments. Uh, I believe the role of the Commission is essential to ensure the credibility of this exercise, working, of course, hand in hand with independent national regulators. And the European Council will assess initial findings by the end of 2011 on the basis of a report by the Commission. We are also calling on Member States to implement the new directive on nuclear safety in full and to adopt rapidly the Commission proposal on nuclear waste. We also need to strengthen international standards and we'll make concrete proposals in the upcoming review of the Global Convention on Nuclear Safety. And we also have decided to put this very high in our priorities when dealing with third countries, namely our neighbors. But I'd like to highlight the very important, I would say, historic conclusions of this European Council regarding economic policy and economic governance. Today we have endorsed very important conclusions on economic governance, and I believe this can be a major change. We have reinforced our monetary union with an economic union. I think we can say that economic and monetary union will finally stand on both legs. In concrete terms, we have agreed a course of action with clear priorities for economic policy, where member states take clear commitments to strengthen fiscal discipline, financial stability, competitiveness, employment, and growth, which are agreed by all. And this will be topped up with a pact for the euro, or uh, the euro plus pact, for the 17 members of the European area, of the euro area, but also the members that are going to be joined in the first phase by Poland, Bulgaria, Denmark, Romania, Lithuania, and Latvia. On the basis of the Commission's annual growth survey, the European semester of ex ante coordination of budgetary and economic policy is well underway. The ball is now firmly in the court of member states. It is now up to them to present ambitious national reform programs implementing the Europe 2020 goals by the end of April. This requires real ownership and drive from within each member state. I won't underline this point because, as you know, this point was very, very often discussed regarding the past Lisbon strategy. The need of the real ownership by our member states in terms of national reform programs 
and what they can do to achieve goals that have been commonly agreed. And this point was today also highlighted in the conclusions. We will be, of course, very objective, but at the same time firm in the analysis of member states' commitments, and we will, of course, work carefully in the recommendations, country-specific recommendations that we will make. And we also have agreed an effective backstop mechanism, ESM, to guarantee the stability of the euro area. The operational features of the permanent stability mechanism were confirmed. In particular, it will have the capacity to provide assistance of up to 500 billion euros. Uh, in the unlikely event we need it, we will have real firepower in place. I am confident this will not be the case because of new governance system we are now putting in place. The reinforced surveillance system is also based in our six pack of proposals made on the 29th of September. The European Parliament will set its position in April. Then negotiations can focus on reaching a final deal in June. The end result can only be stronger. And I think now we are really very close to finalize all this architecture of stronger economic governance, not only for the euro area, but indeed for the European Union. This is indeed a very good result for Europe a result that reinforces the community approach. I was also pleased during today's discussion to see the strong support for our efforts to stimulate growth with deepening of the single market. We will present in April the Single Market Act with um, a key set of 12 priority proposals. There was today a clear commitment of all member states to uh, reinforce the action through the deepening of the single market so we can boost growth and jobs in the European Union. So, all in all, a very successful European Council, the one we had yesterday and today. Thank you. Some uh, questions, please. Identify yourself and the media you represent. Sir? Ivo Caizzi, Corriere della Sera. Uh, for Mr. Van Rompuy, I would like uh, um, to know if it's true that uh, the Council yesterday was delayed by the request of Mrs. Merkel to have special financial condition for countries with the so-called AAA rating uh, of the rating agency. And uh, I would also would like to know why a request seems to be refused. For Mrs. Barroso, is, if I may, I would like to know what you, uh, you mean in the conclusion when uh, you ask for extra effort to some member states that have uh, problem with the fiscal discipline. So we discussed yesterday about uh, the operational features of the uh, stability mechanism uh, we made some uh, changes on the text that was agreed a few days before by the Ministers of Finance, but that is the role of the European Council. We, we are responsible at the end. Huh? Uh, so we, uh, we agreed on a, new text, on a new text on the way that we can have those 500 billion at our disposal effectively, taking, it, taking into account that we will have a, a more a more balanced uh, capital um, fulfillment uh, over a period of five years instead of three years. So that had uh, some consequences. And we had at the end, with all the countries, AAA and others, a final agreement mm -hmm. on the text. And that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. But it took not so much time as you are insinuating. We discussed uh, most of the time on Libya, and the rest of the work was done at the working group level, and we agreed quite quickly on the level of the heads of states and of government. I'm not sure I understood your question, but uh, what I said is that now, with the new um, rules of economic governance in the European Union, we'll have more means than before to be sure that member states will respect fiscal discipline. That was my comment. There was not a specific issue. But in fact, the overall proposals, the proposals made on the basis of the uh, task force shared by the President of the European Council, and also what we have put forward in the six legislative proposals, it will reinforce in a very, very clear way the, the possibility of uh, ensuring fiscal discipline 
in the member states. And I think this is critically important for the stability and growth pact, for overall uh, confidence in our uh, governance and also in our economy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Radio Moscow, Mayak. Uh, two questions. One of these, uh, the testing of the neighbor countries is including the uh, nuclear power station in Russia, is the first question. And the second, one, what happened with the mm, nuclear power station that will be not so high level for the testing? They will be destroyed or what, what happened with them? Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, what we have decided today was regarding um, our neighbors, of course, we respect our, the sovereign right of our neighbors, but we believe that these matters are matters of global responsibility because the, any kind of uh, problem that may happen in one country uh, does not usually stop at its borders. So we have said in our conclusions the following. The priority after committing ourselves to highest standards and a very precise program, we say the priority of ensuring the safety of nuclear plants obviously cannot stop at our borders. The European Union will request that similar stress tests be carried out in the neighboring countries and worldwide regarding both existing and planned plants. In this regard, full use should be made of relevant international organizations. And we are also saying the highest standards for nuclear safety should be implemented and continuously improved in the European Union and promoted internationally. And we are also saying that the Commission is invited to reflect on how to promote nuclear safety with our neighbor countries, neighboring countries. So this is a matter that we, we are going to discuss with our neighboring countries. For instance, next month I will go to Kiev. There is a commemoration a day to, to, announce, to, to evoke the Chernobyl disaster. And in fact, we are working with Ukraine on uh, closing the sarcophage of the Chernobyl. And in fact, there is a pledging conference. The European Union is going to contribute. So I think it's a common responsibility to ensure that the nuclear plants have the highest possible um, safety standards. This is a matter also for the International Agency of uh, Atomic Energy, and we are working, and the European Union is going to promote this agenda worldwide. So for the, the, the other question, what will we do? So I think we, we agreed on a very clear procedure and stressing a new role for the Commission uh, in, uh, the, in the matters of nuclear safety. So we are asking first that the European Nuclear Safety Regulatory Group and the Commission we are asking the Commission, we are, they are inviting them to develop as soon as possible the scope and the modalities of these tests in a coordinated framework in the light of the lessons learned from the accident in Japan. So we will have as much as possible a coordinated framework and the role of the Commission and European organization is key in all this. And there's a new role for the Commission. Second, the assessments will be conducted by independent national authorities and through peer review and their outcome and any necessary subsequent measures that will be taken should be shared with the Commission and with the European Organization of Regulators. So the outcome of the assessment and any necessary subsequent measures that will be taken and that can be a broad range of possibilities uh, that would be shared with the Commission. And then the Commission would report on, the, on all this on the European Council by the end of 2011. So we have three stages. We have determining the scope of the stress test, then the assessment by themselves, and finally uh, an evaluation on all this by the European Council on the basis of a report of the Commission. Thank you. Um, I'm here. It's uh, Rob Herbaut, VRT Belgian TV. I have a question about the European semester uh, you mentioned. Um, how detailed do the plans have to be that member states have to introduce by end of April? Does a list of uh, vague intentions, is that enough? Or does it have to be contain uh, precise measures? And you also said member states have to prove real ownership. 
can member states who have a caretaking government, can they show real ownership or do you need a government with full powers for that? It's a very tricky question. Referring to the Belgian situation, I, I don't advise you to go deep in that, in that matter. <laughs> It's for me the question. I thought it was yeah, for you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, what I can I can tell you what is the general orientation that was adopted today by the European Council. I will not come now in specific uh, uh, countries, but all member states will translate the priorities that we have agreed today into concrete measures to be included in their stability or convergence programs. So the budgetary matters. All and national reform programs, so everything that has to do with structural reform. And on this basis, the Commission will present its proposals for country-specific opinions and recommendations in good time for their adoption before the June European Council. And what were the priorities that were agreed today by the 27? Priority to restoring sound budgets and fiscal sustainability, reducing unemployment through labor market reforms, making new efforts to uh, enhance growth. And afterwards, also, uh, there were some other measures. For instance, um, in terms of the fiscal consolidation efforts uh, and the growth enhancing structural reforms. It's a list of priorities. Uh, you can read it in the conclusions. I think it's a very important uh, list. And so what we are going to do now, member states will present their reports, hopefully by April. Of course, there are different national circumstances. And then the commission will make a an objective assessment of this and make some specific recommendations and we hope that everything will be uh, ready for adoption by the June European Council. This is the first time we are doing this. So we want it to be a success. And uh, in because this is a real case of coordination of economic policies. This is not harmonization of economic policies because the situations are different. Uh, we know that very well. The situations in our 27 member states are very different. But precisely because of this, it is important to have assessment of individual uh, situations in a way that we try to avoid negative spillovers and, if possible, have positive spillovers. Yes, sir. I, I thought... Uh, just, just adding to what uh, the President of the Commission said, that uh, as far as I know, all the countries participating in the Euro Plus Pact, also those who have not uh, governments with full powers, will commit and they will, they, are, uh, they will send us a list of their concrete commitments, uh, complying with the five or six targets of the Euro Pact Plus. And uh, Belgium will also send us their precise commitments. And the second uh, is that for the stability uh, and growth pact, they have to introduce, of course, in April, plans for the upcoming years, what the budgetary targets are, and how they will fulfill uh, the requirements in order to meet the targets. Uh, so I think that also there, uh, all governments will take, undertake this exercise. Uh, so I, uh, it is not a difference between the different kinds of governments. Everybody has to uh, apply the rules. Yes. So it's Marco Zatterin from La Stampa. Back to the nuclear energy, please. I would like to know whether the stress tests will be compulsory and if not, why? Thank you. No, I mean, uh, President Van Rompuy already said, and he read the, uh, the, the article. So now, the Commission and the European Nuclear Safety Regulatory Group are invited to develop the scope and modalities of these tests in a coordinated framework. And that's what we are going to do. So we are not yet in a position to tell you exactly how they are going to, to, to do them. Of course, we, we will propose, at least I'm telling you from the Commission uh, point of view, that they all nuclear sites in Europe will be subject to these inspections. I think that is a matter of credibility. But now we just received a mandate to work with this re uh, network of regulators independent national regulators, to prepare the modalities of the stress tests. I cannot yet be more precise now. I can tell you that, of course, we expect them to be 
um, universal, universal in Europe. So for all um, uh, uh, nuclear sites should be subject to these uh, assessments uh, of safety. And this is what I can tell you then. And afterwards, we'll make a report to the, to the European Council on the basis of what the findings of those uh, tests. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.